Stay tuned. Coming up, we discuss the neuroscience behind what causes your gut feeling or intuition and why you might want to pay attention to it. But first, let's hear from our sponsor, Midwest Fire. At Midwest Fire, they know better efficiency results in less waste, and it adds value to every truck they deliver. That's why they have worked hard to implement lean manufacturing processes throughout their factory. Lean manufacturing means a lower cost to build with the savings passed on to you. To learn more, visit MidwestFire.com. Hello and welcome to the Situation Awareness Matters show, episode 352. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situational awareness and decision making for individuals and teams who work in high risk, high consequence, time compressed environments with changing conditions. The SA Matters mission is simple. We want to help you see the bad things coming in time to prevent bad outcomes. Today's feature segment is sponsored by Gasway Virtual Training. There are 33 online training programs for you to choose from. Some of the programs are live events presented virtually with Q&A, and some of them are pre-recorded programs. To learn more, visit samatters.com website and click on the Virtual Training tab. All right, let's jump into our feature segment as we explore the neuroscience behind what causes your gut feeling or intuition and why you might want to pay attention to it. To understand how you can benefit from intuition, we must first lay a foundation of where the knowledge comes from that forms intuition. Your brain is constantly assessing and gathering information, some of which you do have conscious awareness of, and some of the information is gathered completely unintentionally. The gathered information is stored as patterns of information. This information starts a, in the short-term memory and can then be forgotten or it can be sent down the highway to longer-term memory storage locations. How exactly this happens is a complex process beyond the scope of this show. <clears throat> Once information reaches its long-term memory destination, there are a number of factors that influence your ability to recall that information. Recency, familiarity, emotional connection, routines and repetition, just to name a few. Some information is recalled consciously, which is to say that you can have complete awareness of the information. An example would be like your home address, names and faces of loved ones, uh, where you were and what you were doing on a specific date that a, tragedy, a tragic event occurred. Other information is not so easy to recall into conscious memory. Simply because you cannot recall it <clears throat> does not mean necessarily that you have forgotten it. Occasionally, you'll have something happen or see something or hear something that will cause a memory from long ago to flood back into your consciousness. This is an example of what is called tacit knowledge. Knowledge that resides outside of everyday awareness. Another form of tacit knowledge is the knowledge that never comes into consciousness, but you nonetheless know it. Take, for example, driving a car. Most experienced drivers are able to operate a vehicle at highway speeds and carry on conversations in the car, um, all while not thinking about the act of driving. You've been driving, have you ever been driving somewhere, arrived at your destination and realized that you <clears throat> didn't remember part of the drive? You really weren't paying attention to driving, perhaps because you were talking to someone, singing along with songs on the radio, or you were in deep thought. How are you able to safely operate the vehicle? Tacit knowledge. You are driving the vehicle with the reliance on stored information from past driving experiences, and past training, and past video games you've played, and past movies that you've watched. All that subconscious, tacit knowledge allows you to pay attention to other things and depends upon intuition to guide you down the highway. It seems a little scary to think, that, uh, think about driving that way, but we do that without even realizing it. 
<clears throat> the reliance on tacit knowledge in driving is what gets some young drivers into trouble. They watch their parents and other experienced drivers and see how flawlessly they do it, and they're lulled into believing that operating a vehicle is easy because the expert driver makes it look so easy. The young driver doesn't have the benefit of stored tacit knowledge yet, though. Yet they continue to talk to other passengers, talk on their cell phones, text, sing along with the radio, and engage in deep thought and lose track of the fact that they're driving a vehicle at highway speeds. Absent a storage of tacit knowledge, the young driver does not benefit from intuition because they lack experience. Driving is a conscious act and the brain cannot give its attention to two conscious tasks simultaneously, causing young drivers to have more near misses and accidents. Since 2007, SA Matters instructors have helped more than 1,200 organizations and 87,000 individuals improve high-risk decision-making, including first responders, industrial workers, military personnel, business leaders, medical professionals, utility workers, highway workers, aviation workers, oil refinery operators, and more. If you or someone you care about works in a high-stress, high-consequence decision-making environment, then we are here to help to improve their safety and survival and help them accomplish the most important mission of all, and that is to go home to the ones who love them. Since the start of the pandemic, I've had some amazing opportunities to present my programs on a virtual platform to groups ranging in size from six to 400, with recorded playbacks being viewed by as many as 22,000 responders. <laughs> Here's hoping the new year and the introduction of the COVID vaccine will reduce the number of cases and return us back to some form of normalcy for live in-person training. As you will see from the list of upcoming events, things are looking up. On January 6th, I'll be facilitating the Minnesota Virtual Training Series. This program will feature Steve Prisborowski talking about courage under fire leadership. On January 13th, I'll be presenting Flawed Situational Awareness Lightning Round Program for the International Association of Fire Chiefs Volunteer and Combination Officers Section Virtual Symposium in the Sun. On January 18th, I'll be facilitating the Minnesota Virtual Training Series again. This program features Eddie Buchanan talking about leading with attitude. On January 19th, I'll, present, I'll be presenting a virtual situational awareness barriers program for Connecticut OSHA. For January 20th, I'll be presenting a virtual flawed situational awareness program for the Maritime Fire Chiefs Association in Canada. On January 21, I'll be presenting, hopefully, a live in-person situational awareness program for the Utah Fire Chiefs Association in Salt Lake City. On February 2, I'll be facilitating the Minnesota Virtual Training Series. This program features Kit Welchlin talking about how to deal with difficult people. February 6th and 7th, I'll be presenting, hopefully, three live in-person situational awareness programs for the Missouri Winter Fire School in Columbia, Missouri. On February 8 and 10, I'll be presenting, hopefully, live again in person, situational awareness programs for the Spring Fire Department in Spring, Texas. February 17th, I'll be facilitating the Minnesota Virtual Training Series. This program will be featuring Dr. Chad Weinstein talking about <clears throat> fire service leadership from the inside out. Thank you to the organizations who have allowed me to offer your members virtual training and a special thanks to the 46 agencies that have postponed training programs in 2020 and are patiently waiting to reschedule. If you're interested in hosting a virtual program or a live event, just click the Contact Us tab at the top of the SA Matters homepage and I will give you a call. Finally, remember to check the show notes for how to subscribe to our newsletter, how to follow us on social media. There we're sharing ideas about how to improve situational awareness, how to make better decisions under stress, and how to improve the skills of critical thinking and resilient problem solving. Well, that's it. Episode 352 of the Situational Awareness Matters show is complete. Thank you to our platinum sponsor, Midwest Fire. Thank you to our feature segment sponsor, Gasway Virtual Training. And thank you to our associate sponsor, Chief Miller. 
And most importantly, thank you, the listeners and viewers of this show, for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there, and may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters Show with Dr. Richard Gassaway. If you're interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit his website, essaymatters.com. If you're interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for a program, or if you would like to be a guest on his show, click the Contact Us tab at the top of the homepage.